front wheel drive, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Which is the best for Toge? In this video we're going to be discussing how each differs and how to use each one properly. So make sure you stay tuned because you won't want to miss out on this one. So let's start with the classic layout of engine in the front and power in the back. This makes rear wheel drive cars well balanced in terms of weight, making this configuration ideal for conventional performance driving. Front engine rear wheel driven cars, also known as FRs, accelerate out of corners naturally, transferring weight to the driven wheels in the back, improving traction as we step on the accelerator out of a corner. However, with FRs or most other rear wheel driven configurations, such as front mid engined FMRs or rear mid engined RMRs, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Typically, but not always, a small amount of power out of the corner causes a light front end, inducing understeer, and a lot of power causes oversteer, also known as wheel spin. But that's not all. If you suddenly lift off the throttle whilst accelerating and turning, you will cause lift off oversteer. Finally, a bad downshift or a money shift will cause the rears to massively decrease in speed or even lock up and in turn, you'll most likely experience a terrifying spin. If you're not driving an FR, but an FMR or RMR, the likelihood of all of this happening will increase dramatically, as the engine being placed farther back only moves the center of gravity rearwards, making the car even more unbalanced through turns. But despite rear wheel drive's many risks, they're mostly forgivable for the fact that rear wheel drive allows some classic power oversteer and drifting. However, many skilled drivers are also able to use rear wheel drive's downfalls such as lift off oversteer or money shifting to their advantage. Now let's move on to the most popular drivetrain on the planet, front wheel drive. But if rear wheel drive is deemed the be all and end all of a proper driver's car, then why is front wheel drive so popular? Well, to put it simply, it's vastly more simple and ultimately cost effective to build. But also, with front wheel drive, a powertrain isn't invading the cabin, giving you more room for activities in a small form factor car. Front wheel drive's biggest advantage is the fact that the car is being pulled instead of pushed around a corner, which results in a much tighter turning circle. This means front wheel drive cars can take those tight corners much more efficiently. Additionally, they won't need to worry about oversteer on the exit of corners. Even if a front wheel driven car does oversteer, all you need to do is full throttle and the rear tires will fall back in line instantly. Not only this, but the powertrain is mounted directly above the front wheels, giving you better traction in wet conditions. But as with rear wheel drive, it's not all perfect. Front wheel drive can really hinder even a decent driver's pursuit of a quick toge time. Those poor front tires have got a lot to deal with. Almost everything. They accelerate, steer and do most of the braking at the same time. When two tyres are asked to do too much, they typically fail. Tyres only have a certain amount of grip. When you accelerate, turn and brake, a chunk of that grip is being used. So when the front tyres have all three actions to contend with, it's much easier to hit the limit of grip. So if you want to trail brake into a corner for example, which requires both braking and steering at the same time, you have to be very cautious to not overstress the tyres and enter understeer. With the front tyres having so many responsibilities, it's incredibly easy to overheat the front, resulting in greater wear and less grip. Another problem is in one of the classic traits of front wheel driven cars, torque steer. Torque steer happens when torque from hard acceleration pulls the car to one side. It's also a byproduct of the front tyres being asked to do too much. But that is not even front wheel drive's worst offence. That happens when you see a beautifully sweeping corner that deserves to be drifted, because then you'll be out of luck. Drifting in the traditional sense is impossible in a front wheel drive car. Now I think the best way to explain this would be with a shopping trolley or car if you're American. If you push it from behind, you can actually hold it sideways in a drift and it'll gain momentum that way. But if you pull it from the front, it's gonna straighten up naturally and you won't be able to gain momentum while it's drifting. However, I have made a video on how to actually drift front wheel drive previously in this series. So make sure you go and check that out after this video if that sounds interesting to you. So we've done both rear wheel drive and front wheel drive. And that leaves us with one more drivetrain to discuss, all wheel drive. 
But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. As the name suggests, all-wheel drive sends power to both the front and rear wheels at the same time. All-wheel drive systems differ from four-wheel drive in that they require no driver selection to drive all four wheels. All-wheel drive is the best of both worlds, almost. It adds stability and traction under power, especially accelerating through corners. Additionally, if the engine power approaches or exceeds a level that would overwhelm just two driven tyres, having four really does help. Usually, all-wheel drive cars have sensors monitoring traction levels, so when one or two wheels lose traction, the all-wheel drive system can distribute traction to the necessary wheels, keeping things balanced, meaning you can be more aggressive with the throttle. But on the flip side, it also adds weight because of the extra components needed to drive all the wheels. The added weight makes the car slower and less agile through corners, although some may say the reduced agility is negated by all-wheel drive itself. So now you know the ins and outs of each drivetrain, let's discuss how to handle each differently on the toge. Power to the rear is the traditional norm, so let's start with rear wheel drive. The technique for cornering a rear wheel driven car goes like this. Brake hard and in a straight line, then slowly bleed off the brake as you rotate the car and aim for the apex. Then ease onto the accelerator, transferring the weight back onto the rears and roll on the throttle as you straighten up. So remember, rotation is fast, but too much drifting is slow. As you might expect, front wheel drive responds to acceleration a little different than rear wheel drive. Applying throttle in a rear wheel drive car can kick the tail out, but in a front wheel driven car, the wheels are pulling the car. The opposite will happen and straighten the car out. The best technique for getting around the corner as quickly as possible is to start with a trail brake and put the weight of the car onto the nose. Then aim for a late apex. If you experience lift off oversteer, begin adding power to balance the car and straighten it back out. Up next is all wheel drive. It actually handles a lot like front wheel drive cars on the toge, depending heavily on how power is distributed front to rear. The best part about all wheel drive is that you have all four wheels digging into the road to pull you out of the corner. For the best technique, you would need to apex quite a bit later than you would in a two wheel driven car. Let the tail of the car slide so you are pointed towards the apex of the corner and then step on the throttle aggressively. Nothing comes out of the corner quite like an all-wheel driven car. So that was all you need to know about each drivetrain. Now you should be able to pick your config. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe if you want to see more Toge content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.